No one knows what the future holds for agriculture. The farms are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, get big or get out. Everyone's nervous about the bankers involved in their farm. And we don't quite know where the future, where we're going with all of this. So everyone's trying to look at all of it. For the past two decades, Mary Jane Butters has carved a life for her family in rural Idaho by taking a different trail for mainstream farming. Instead of the more traditional row crops or livestock production, she has opened her farm up to agritourism, as well as many other alternative enterprises. It's different kinds of things, that diversification. Agritourism is a big deal now, inviting people to enjoy what, what you know, what you very much value, which is your sense of place. So agritourism is an, something that farmers should buy into on some level. See those? Uh, See, yeah. that's a garlic seed. And you can pop that in your mouth when you're working in the garden and <laughs> kind of get a little bit of garlic flavor going. According to the Department of Agriculture, some 52,000 U.S. farms earn income from agritourism, which can take many forms. Some farmers and ranchers promote new crops or livestock, while others focus on organic, educational, or recreational agriculture. But there is a common theme. These niche marketers rely on what is available to keep the family on the farm and the farm in the family. Butters claims farming organically makes the most sense for her operation. Actually, I've probably been involved in organic farming my entire life because we grew all of our own vegetables and sewed our own clothes, a very self-sufficient family, and we, my father subscribed to organic gardening. In fact, when I left home, that was one of my gifts, going away presents was a subscription to organic gardening. Considered an organic pioneer, Butters has found success in the land while maintaining environmental integrity. Mary Jane's farm is nestled in the stunning Palouse region of northern Idaho, where for 22 years, Butters has raised everything from bees to chickens to garlic to wheat. She's even raising crops for biodiesel to fuel her pink Mercedes Benz. I'm like a good farmer. You have to diversify. If one crop fails, you try something, you get up the next morning, you try something else. And we have a very diversified farm here. Okay, you want a shovel? If you, you want a pitchfork there? No. Recently, Butters started offering local residents something she calls the country club. She describes it as a piece of her farm for their very own. The country club was my answer. I tried the farmer's market for years. My husband enjoyed the social aspect of the farmer's market, but we didn't make enough money. And then I moved into the CSA program, and I think that's a fascinating concept. But that didn't work for me e either because I felt like the people still weren't connecting enough with their food. I wanted them to really connect with what it takes to pr feed them. I wanted them to know that, and I didn't want to just deliver it to their doorstep. I see one over here that looks big. Really? Oh, yeah. I definitely am a supporter of trying to eat what's grown nearby, and just especially having kids knowing where food comes from. Food doesn't really come from a grocery store. I mean, obviously, that's where most of us get it, but it really does grow. <laughs> the $100 seasonal membership buys people a key to the farm. Members have access to the farm from dawn to dusk, seven days a week, and are able to pick a large variety of fruits and vegetables at market price. The idea that we could access the food ourselves and these kids could have some exposure to that was appealing. Many people have farm fantasies. Everyone wants their farm, but it's cost prohibitive sometimes. Um, they have other jobs. So I want them to experience the aesthetic, the romance of a farm. I think it's a model that other farmers could use. Another element to Butter's agritourism empire is a chance to stay off the beaten path in her bed and breakfast. She offers visitors unique wall tents where they can experience rural life in a rustic environment with no electricity or phones. And she created the Farm Girl Connection, a website that brings women across the country together. The old style farm clubs that the women uh, formed years ago, they had time to go, they, they had more time on their hands. And so I decided to create that version online and it's exploding. And there are thousands of women on there chatting. One of the most successful aspects of Butter's business is her line of organic backpacking food sold online and in camping stores across North America. The organic food is easy to prepare for outdoor enthusiasts, something Butter says she dreamed of having when she lived in Idaho's backcountry several years ago. And that's actually our biggest source of revenue is our food business, absolutely. 
Um, probably we do a million dollars worth of food every year um, from that little daylight basement over there. All of it's done here. The food is mixed here. It's packaged here and shipped from here and brought in and stored. And I invented all the recipes for the foods. Editor and author are two more hats Butters wears. She has her own nationally distributed magazine called Mary Jane's Farm, and her most recent book is entitled Mary Jane's Outpost that came with a $1.35 million advance. Though Butters' agritourism enterprise may not fit mainstream farming models, she has created a business that promotes sustainable agriculture and traditional family values while maintaining that ever important bottom line. Do what it is you love and let the money follow truly um, and take those risks. And especially for women entrepreneurs, we've kind of been disenfranchised all along, especially in agriculture. So there's, we're better risk takers and we come up with these imaginative ideas. So I think it's important to, um, to follow those whims. For Market to Market, I'm Laurel Bauer-Bergmeyer.